Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And here we are now at the Avocado Festival in La Habra Heights, the home of the Haas Avocado. And I'm here with my friend Gerardo, who invited me to the event, as well as the queen of avocados, Julie Frink. And I am here bringing your questions um, that you've shared with me in regards to um, what are the best avocado flavors that we should be looking for, and Julie's going to help us answer that. So um, with that, Julie, what would you recommend for those watching? What would be the best avocado flavors we should be shopping from of these? I remember last time you brought like close to 80 varieties of avocados. What are the best avocados we should be looking for? Well, it depends on what you like, what you want. If you're going to uh, use them in a smoothie, you might want something like the choquette. If you're going to use them on sliced on toast, and it just happens to be March or April or May, you might want the JB avocado if you can get it. They're hard to come by, but boy, are they good. So when it comes to varieties of avocados, you mentioned the choquette is a great variety for smoothies, yes. right? And then JB is good for ideally for what? Oh, everything. It, um, I've made guacamole and people said, oh, this is the best guacamole I ever had. Well, because I made it with JB or Charwill avocados and it's going to be just wonderful. But a uh, good avocado is good. Well, let me tell you about my favorite salad. You take a good avocado like a Helen in a uh, July or a JB in May, a Hass in the spring, a good Fuerte in the spring, a Holiday or a Reed or a Nabal in the fall. And you take this salad and you chop up avocados in it and you get some good lettuce and some good, um, yeah. some good pine nuts and a whole lot of citrus. Oh, mandarin orange. Oh wow! And that would probably be more, you know, January through June. Yeah, yeah. So you mix that up, you've got the best salad going. People don't know you can mix citrus and avocado and get a super flavor. We typically like mix it. avocados with lemon. Like lemon juice seems to be the pr predominant marinade, you know, and even in making salad dressings. My wife and I were talking about the versatility of avocados, and I know this is a little bit off point. Um, but as we're driving here, we're like, what can you use avocados for? And we're talking about, you know, for breakfast, you know. For lunch, for dinner, <laughs> and for snacks. And she's like, she mentioned the smoothie. She said her mom uses it as a facial sometimes. Um, I see over here there's a, a table with perfumes and soaps. And, um, and then outside we saw that there's, you know, some forks and straws that can be used using the pits and, and, and the wood. Oh my goodness. Um, so like the versatility of avocados is enormous. And, well, and you can make wonderful things from the wood. My brother is a woodworker and he's made wonderful vases and bowls and just great looking things out of the beautiful avocado wood. Now it does not work for flooring because it's, it's a soft wood. But for pretty things or, or a market tree, it would be beautiful. Okay, so coming back to the original question, what is the best tasting avocado fruits and the trees that people should be looking for when going to the growers? Well, I was just talking to a man who wanted a, a, a narrow avocado because he has a small space. And I was telling him, get the reed avocado. The reed avocado is our narrowest avocado and it is fantastic in the fall. It, you know, people love reeds. And so get a reed if you don't have a lot of reeds. Or if you want to toss a little tree to uh, block the... Uh, uh, a view, a view you know, or using uh, it as a hedge. So yes, again, the reed yes. avocado is a very skinny, tall tree. It can be. Yeah. Compared to some of the others. So let's see, what's the opposite of the reed? Which one would have like well, the biggest, broadest can be? Fuerte likes to just wander all over the place. So, so Fuerte. So if you had a lot of room, if you had an area behind your house and the kids like to climb in a tree, you would want a Fuerte because it's a, it's a great wandering tree. And another one that will do that is also the uh, Helen with two L's. And it has a fabulous Wonderful. So the Helen's another um, large canopy yes. variety of avocado. Yes. How did these rank to the Haas? Like my my goal in, 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 in 
realizing what is the best tasting avocado. How does the Haas rank compared to these other 80 varieties that you brought with you? Well, it's, it's an excellent avocado. I have a Haas tree in my backyard and I've been eating food from the tree and it's been really, really good. So La Habra Heights has to be celebrated for being the home of the Haas Correct. because it is a, a wonderful It variety. is. And it's in all the stores across the country and around the world. Yes. yes. But, um, and, and they can grow it in different parts of the world, so you get it all the time in the markets, but you have to be careful that you don't get one that's not spoiled in parts. For sure. While we're talking about the Haas avocado, it is from Julie that I learned that it is pronounced Haas and not Haas, for those of you that are trying to learn it, and I know there's a story behind it. Well, Dana Haas is here today. Oh, wonderful. She is Rudolph Haas's granddaughter. Her father was also really Yeah. But she is here today. Oh, wow, that's wonderful. And, uh, Hopefully, we'll get to meet her. Yes, she's a very, very nice person. <laughs> Gerardo, in your opinion, what are some of your favorite varieties of avocados that we should be looking for? Top two and then top four. Okay. Your favorites. Well, the top two, if you're going to have the top two, you're going to have to have, have the Fuerte and the Haas. If you're only going to have two in your backyard. If you're only going to have one in your backyard, I'm going to go with what, what she just said the reed. Reed is, if you only have one tree, it's going to be the reed. Now, if you have multiple, if you have room for multiple, then we're going to go with the lamb hoss, a surprise, and, of course, a hoss. Sounds good. That's how Sounds I... Sounds pretty good, but I have access to over 200 varieties, and so I am a little bit... Um, Oh, we call ourselves avocado snobs because we have all these varieties. Right. So, um, like I say, I like the JB, I like the Helen with two right. L's, but you know, most people do not have those. No. And there's no access to them and as there's well. there's no access, yeah. but there better be. We better get somebody to get out there and Hopefully sell somebody it. will do that for us. Yes. Um, the other question a lot of viewers have is, what are the most cold tolerant or freeze tolerant varieties and in my growing up I always knew Fuerte which is Spanish for strong was one of the avocados that stood you know a freeze when many of the avocados in the orchard died whatever number of years ago all the avocados died but Fuerte stood strong and continued to produce and that's how it apparently got its name but I know there's other more cold tolerant varieties of avocados that people around the country can grow you know uh, it's pretty difficult. We have one in our collection we call Aravipa, and I guess it was originally Good. sold as San Juan or something. I just read about that. Uh, but it came from the Aravipa River in, I think, Arizona, yeah. and apparently it was probably a seed of a Mexican avocado that somebody threw on the ground and it grew. And it uh, has gone, I think, from uh, seven, uh, let's see, 17 degrees to 117 degrees. Now, you wouldn't grow it here because there's others that are much better. Got it. But if you wanted to grow one where it's a little iffy when you get down to 17 degrees. Wow. Uh, you might like it because, hey, it's an avocado and it's not too bad. It's got a big seed and it's not that large and there's not that much uh, avocado in there. But hey, it's an avocado. But at least you got an avocado. Yeah, and I know a lot of my friends in Arizona do grow the Aravipa, so I'm glad oh, you really? actually, yeah, yeah, I hear about it all the time. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, if you have to have avocado in your pizza and you live in Arizona. You got an avocado tree. Yeah, that's right. Anything you want to add in regards to cold tolerant? Cold tolerant, I think it's going to be this big tree called the bacon. The bacon is a little more cold tolerant. Good so, windbreaker. It's a large tree. It's a large tree. It's a very large tree. Okay. Yes. And it produces every year. So and, and the fruit doesn't last that long on the tree. It will go. You know, it has a shorter uh, life period than other varieties. So again, bacon, right? Bacon. So bacon and then the other one, Forte, and then if you're looking for really cold tolerant, then that's going to be the Aravipa. So. And then other than that, grow blueberries. <laughs> and grow blueberries. Um, the other thing I want to add in, and I brought here with us the Ivory Organics products, but I want to talk about um, all of the avocado trees that I see at all of the nurseries have white all over the tree trunks when they go to sell them. Can you explain what is that white stuff on them and why do they apply it? Well, leaves like sun. 
but wood burns and if it gets too hot and your your wood burns that's not a nice thing so uh if you'll notice in some of our grafting pictures you'll see that we put white paint uh, well, so i see here for example and this one over here the tree trunks are white right there and then this this trunk still has some whiteness on it too it looks like it was painted it's working its way I off. I don't know but if you'll look at this you'll see we're applying paint. Oh right there there's because some drops. We, with white paint because it will burn so yes it's a it's a good idea to, uh, to especially what? if you are in an area where you get a lot of intense sun yes. And that's a gardening concept known as whitewashing. So you mentioned that the leaves like the sun but the bark will burn if it's exposed to sun, and that's the reason for whitewashing. Um, the Ivory Organics products, have you used it yet on your trees? Uh, I think I did, but it's been a while back. Got it. That's good stuff. Well, I brought with me um, the ready-to-use spray bottle, as well as um, our now Armory listed. Yes. Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Protection from Damaging Sunburned Insects and Rodents. This can can make anywhere from 20 to 25 ready-to-use spray bottles. They can spray on the entire plant and it also serves as an anti-transparent to help with any transplant shock. So it'll help with transplant shock as well as help pull the plant through extremes in summer as well as it offers protection during the winter as well. Um, and I know Gerardo, he actually um, has been following the Ivory Organics YouTube channel for about three four, years. Three to four years, six yeah. since 2016. Well, the, the stuff in here is dry. And it's you dry. Mix it, you mix it with... You add water. So if you fill it up with water, it will make a can. A squeeze, and then, then you can also spray the entire structure. So leaves and all, like if you're, if you're concerned about, you know, weather or temperature or even like with your cuttings and stuff that are... Um, grafting and stuff, you can spray all of this exposed wood that's otherwise not protected, or I see you got parafilm on it, but if it's exposed, that'll offer some insulation from direct sun as well. Then when this is all used up, you mix Then you can make some more. So imagine you can make 25 bottles if the goal is just to use it as a spray. We use it on our tomatoes, peppers, squash, roses, like on all of our plants to help again with a transplant shot, especially when they're small, it keeps them insect free. Um, and also now the new and improved formula also has diatomaceous earth and the benefits that come with that to also keep pests off your plants um, and boring pests from going in and out of the um, plant as well. Okay, so my last question for Julie and Gerardo is what are your best dwarf or semi-dwarf varieties? Everybody has in the back of their mind that an avocado is gonna grow 30 to 40 feet tall and we just don't have room in our backyard orchards to sacrifice our entire property to one avocado tree. So for someone looking for a small, manageable variety of avocado, what should we be shopping for? Well, I always tell them if somebody says it's a dwarf, they're wrong. There are no dwarf avocados. There are some tr avocado trees that are smaller than others. The little cotto is one, but we have a neighbor with one. It's 50 years old, but it's a it's a good sized tree. But it's not like the bacon you're talking about. If they had a bacon, it would be all over the place. But it's a smaller tree. The holiday is a relatively small tree. And uh, the Pinkerton isn't as large as some, and it's excellent. I guess I would say little cotto, and the fruit is not as good as uh, as the holiday. Okay. The uh, reed is a very narrow tree. And so if you have only a place for a narrow avocado, or you want a line of narrow avocados, or you want to make a, a hedge of avocados, use either weed or holiday, okay. because they are the lower ones. But hey, don't try to raise them in a pot. The only people that can do that are Moon Valley nurseries, so they'll like me saying that. Got it. But nobody else can do it. So just to repeat that, the um, the dwarf um, avocados that we should be looking for is Little Cotto, which is also goes by the name of Wurtz. I just learned that yeah. from you. So Wurtz was the original name, but it just wasn't selling as well as being called Little That's Cotto. Way I understand it. The the other slower growing varieties are what again? Well, I like mention? holiday and, and holiday and, and uh, the reed and the reed. If you want a tall now, tree, reed, which you can also it, then bring down oh, like and, the and use it as a hedge. Front yard is not tall at all, and it's there's a picture there. Of okay, it. so this one over here is your reed. Yes, and, and what a beautiful tree! Look at all those fruit. Yard, and it's not very large at all, and it has a lot of fruit. I keep it cut 
so it doesn't go high. Got it. Because if you do, they'll get 30, 40 feet tall. But um, you can keep it down, and it's a, it works well in a small place. That's wonderful information. Gerardo, do you want to add anything in regards to smaller avocados? It's going to always be the little coddle and the holiday. And the reed, like you were saying, is good to keep it at 10 by 10 feet, mm -hmm. like a hedge. Well, that's wonderful. That's a ton of good information. There's something else you said before we recorded, which was containers and the avocados and containers. A lot of people that want to grow their avocados and containers or they're growing them, let's say, in New York. They got them in their balcony and they're just pulling them in for the winter and taking them back out. What can they expect performance-wise from an avocado that's in a container or, you know, they're trying to juggle it between indoor and outdoor growing? Nothing. Simple. <laughs> Nada. Grow blueberries. Grow blueberries. If you're in New York or Vermont, forget it. I mean, if you want to plant the seeds and have a little house plant for a while until it dies, great. You know, grow it as long as you can. Just play with it. But don't try to get fruit off of an avocado tree if you live in Vermont. You That's know. awesome advice. Thank but you. Do, but do plant the seeds and see what they'll do because it's fun and interesting and you get a nice plant for a while. That's awesome. Well, thank you so very much, Julie, for your time. I know you got like 20 more people with questions, um, <laughs> but I hope you have a wonderful day and thank you again so much for... Good to see you, Charles. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you, Charles. <laughs> you get avocado So here we are at the home of Rudolf Haas, where the original Haas avocado tree was planted in 1926. We just took a picture over there by the monument sign. And just imagine this entire valley of La Habra Heights was entirely planted by avocados, thankful to this guy. And just take a look at all of the avocado trees across the street. And as we drive down this community, you can see avocados in pretty much everybody's front and backyards. There's avocados everywhere. Really avocados in every, every street and everywhere we drive, there's avocado trees. So here we are now just driving down the streets of La Habra Heights and you can see that there's avocados on both sides of the road, every street we drive on. It's quite amazing. Check these out. Yes, look up there a couple hundred avocados right there and then over here on the left there's another avocado tree and another one behind that one and then a couple more behind those right there with the hedges see all that that's all avocado that's a real small backyard orchard oh wow and now there's probably close to 50 trees avocado trees right to my left. Look at that, it goes all the way up the hillside as well. So there's some gigantic avocado trees over here. They're probably standing 25 at least, if not up to 30, 35 feet tall. And as we keep going, here's some more ancient avocado trees. About another four on that side. 
And as we're now approaching a low quad tree, standing unpruned 25 feet, covered in hundreds of pounds of low quads. You see all those yellow, oranges fruit. More avocados. If you've enjoyed this educational video brought to you by Ivory Organics, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and hit that push bell notification to get notification as soon as these videos become released and made available to you. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening. Have a good day. I hope you enjoyed this educational moment brought to you by Ivory Organics and if so be sure to give us a thumbs up and most importantly don't forget to hit that subscribe button and as always just want to remind you to keep on growing with Ivory Organics. Wishing you all happy gardening.